Larbert here, continuing our coverage from Radio Row. This is brought to you by Toyota. Joined now by Jets linebacker C.J. Mosley. Thanks for taking the time. Yes, thanks for having me. And I know you're joining the the Campbell's fam. I am. So what's what's the, the deal? Family. What's going on with Campbell's? So um, I was lucky enough, honor enough to to be on a, the Campbell's team this year um, as an ambassador. Uh, my best friend and my business manager hooked the thing, hooked everything up for me to to be able to join this team, but. Um, just as a kid, as we know, we saw the Camels commercial. I know for me, being a football player, the first person I could think of is Donovan McNabb and his mother. So for me to be a part of this team, and um, this year you know, we, went to, we went to the New York Food Bank, and you know, we um, handed out food to, to a lot of people. And you know, my, my mother and my father were there with me. And just to be representing Campbell's and be representing my family uh, was a big honor for me. But uh, the big announcement today is this for this year, for, um, for Chunky Sacks Hunger, uh, we, we um, donated over four million dollars. So just for me to be a part of that, just to have my name on that, and also represent something larger than me, um, is, is very cool to be a part of. So I'm uh, very humble, very proud that I can say I helped uh, the Jets and the NFL. We all helped, um, you know, this world get better one meal at a time. Yeah. Why is that important to you to be a part of that? Um, just I think just as. As far as I can remember, you know, just something that my family and my parents instilled in me as far as giving back to the community, especially really honestly it started um, my senior year in high school. I was just ready. It was just finishing up my senior year. And um, we had a we had a food drive at my high school um, for Christmas. And, you know, me and my brother, we were at home just, you know, doing our normal thing, you know, just be, just being happy. And uh, my parents told us, hey, we need to, you know, go give back. We need to go out and, you know, help people that, you know, that weren't as lucky as we were. So, you know, that day we went out, we handed out food. We had our little Christmas hats on. So, um, you know, since that day, you know, that's kind of, you know, what our DNA has been, you know, to always give back when we can, you know, whether it's, you no know, food drive, whether it's you no know, book bag sale, football camp, any of those little things where we can show that you know um, we don't forget where we came from, and, and we always got to remember that you know um, everyone's not as fortunate to have people um, have their back and you know, have those resources for them. Hey, you're a top tier linebacker in this league, as is Fred Warner, and you've got the respect of your teammates. And Fred Warner had that similarly from the very beginning. He yeah. got the green dot on his helmet his rookie season, a lot of trust being placed in him. When you see Fred Warner play, what do you take notes on or, or what stands out to you when you're watching Fred on the field? Um, well, shoot, the easiest thing that stands out is his motor. Um, he's flying around. No matter where the ball is, he's jumping over the pile and trying to knock somebody out. So um, as a fellow linebacker um, and, you know, as a guy that loves contact, you know, when I see players do those type of things or when I'm watching film, and I see 54, you know, jump over three people to go make a tackle. No, that hypes me up. That makes me want to go make a play and try to, you know, outdo him for the for the next game. So, you know, just that, like, just that friendly competition or just that the way he plays, you know, um, he might not know it, but, you know, that draws me as well. Um, we're, we're in the same system, so when I when we acquired our new coaches with the Jets, I watched, I watched the 49ers a lot and I watched him play. So um, I respect his game a lot. Um, I met him once, I believe last year at the Super Bowl, or maybe two years ago, but you know, the short time I did talk to him, I was a very respectable guy. Um, obviously, you know, he has all respect from his teammates and his coaches, but you know, all that stuff is earned, not given. So a lot of kudos for him, and I you know, hope he has another great great game this, this coming up. Uh, quite, quite the challenge when you've got Travis Kelsey on the other end of the yeah. ball. What challenges does Kelsey present to the linebackers? Well, it's, it's one thing to, to be talented. It's one thing to, to know what you're supposed to do. But when you have an offense, especially a quarterback, when you're on the same page, no matter what happens, um, there's always a deadly threat. Um, you know, playing against Kansas City this year, I can speak. You know, I can speak from experience. Yep. Um, it's been. It was a play where I, you know I had him covered. I thought I had him. I knew the route. I turned around to go. You know, go go look at the quarterback. And next thing you know. Kelsey's hooking up right behind me in the same spot. So, you know, just that connection that those two guys have is really special. Obviously, it takes time. At, I have they've been together um, all these years, but um, it's going to take, you know, all 11 guys on defense to stop, you know, stop Kelsey and, you know, the Kansas City offense. Um, communication. And at the end of the day, you know, when, the play is, when it's time to make that play, go make it. Other than that, you know, just go out there and have fun. What adjustments did you make when you were facing Kelsey throughout that game? Really, we have to make a team adjustment because they got on the top of the fast. It was 17 to nothing, I think, before halftime. So, <laughs> as a team, we have to make some big adjustments. Um, but once we settled down, you know, we kind of got back to our composure. We just went out there and had fun. Um, 
you know, looking back at it now, man, it was a just a memorable game. You know, all the you know the Kelsey and um, the Swift the Swift hype was real big then. I think it was maybe been, oh maybe, was that at its peak? I think it might have been at the beginning, like maybe one or two games in. So um, it was it was a lot of a lot of emotions going into that game, a lot of noise, um, and you know, just think about the crowd, man. It was it was a it was an exciting time to you know be playing that game. Uh, it was a night game, you know, for the Jets fans. So for us, it was a lot of fun. Obviously, we um, Mahomes got the got the first down on the last play and fourth down to for us to take the ball back. But you know, those type of experiences is what you live for, um, and you appreciate them. Uh, even though we didn't get the win, you know, I'll never forget that moment. And you know, next year, next year, same time, whoever it is. We're going to be ready for it. You mentioned the hype of that game. There's no more hype than anything around the Super Bowl. Right. How do players handle the stress of the and, and the pressure from the outside world? How do you tune that out? Yeah, well, when it comes to Super Bowl week, I can't I can't speak because I don't know too much outside of being here at, uh, at Radio Row. Um, but you know, I was fortunate enough to, to play in two national championships at Alabama. And, you know, one thing I can take from that, and just for being an athlete in general with all the noise that goes around it is, you know, you only can control what you can control. You know, if you put in the work, um, you study, you know, you do the football aspect of the things that you've been doing your whole life, then, you know, it's going to handle itself. But when it comes to the things that you can't control, don't worry about it. Um, you know, when it comes to the media, whether it's good or bad or indifferent, you know, you can't let it dictate, you know, your feelings, your mind, your thoughts, and most importantly, your heart. Because at the end of the day, it's only, there's only 11 guys that's going to be on the field out there with you, and that's in, and those are the only people that you could depend on. So, if you if you're not focused on doing your job and worry about other things, then those distractions are going to come up, going to catch up to you at some point. So, um, if anybody asks me, I would just say control what you can control and do what you've been doing. And that's you know that's playing football and making plays. With the Super Bowl on Sunday, I've got to get your pick. Are you locking in a pick for the <laughs> Super Bowl? You know what? I'm not because I really, I really don't know. Um, I mean, both teams are great, great coaches, great players all around, but they played each other already. You know, one team's going out for revenge, the other team's going out to prove that they're a dynasty again, and that's just too much to handle for me. So I'm gonna just watch <laughs> the game as a fan and let the best man win. <laughs> you really could make a great case for either team. Really, you can. When you um, start looking at the numbers and just the, the, how their seasons played out, yep. you really can. Everything matches up well from offense to defense. You know, I think D line, O line, both running backs on both sides, receivers all over. Two, two very consistent, great quarterbacks. You know, de both defense, all, both defense killing it. So uh, it's gonna be a fun game. As a fan, it's gonna be fun to watch. Uh, hopefully, Miss Swift can make it so we can we can keep the hype going with the you know with the NFL. Um, it's, it's just been a, it's been a cool year. You know, it's been a great experience. So I'm obviously looking forward to next year to try to you know make it back to this spot. Yeah, with when you're watching the game on Sunday, what matchup or aspect of the game are you really honing in on that you think will give you a clue as to who might win? Yeah. So for me, I always look at my position first. So I'm gonna look at the linebackers. And um, I'm a defensive guy, so I'm, I'm always see what the offense is doing. So even though it's like I try to watch the game and enjoy it, I'm always looking at, all right, let's see what formation the offense is doing. Okay, he's set up here. I'm trying to guess if it's a run or pass. So just like just playing the game like I'm watching it on film. So um, I'm sure at some point I'm going to start enjoying it more, especially when the, when it gets to the nitty gritty. But you know, um, I definitely look at my position, you know, see if I can take some things away from, you know, the player that I'm looking at and, you know, just watch what the offense is doing. CJ, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Appreciate it.